All right, welcome everybody. Welcome everyone here. Welcome everyone on social media. So glad you've joined us today. It's a wonderful time of the year. It's Christmas season. And uh, of course, when we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm so glad that he came. I'm just so glad that he came. Born of a virgin and we're just, we're just so grateful for... Uh, for him and that, uh, that the Heavenly Father sent him. Hey, I have a message today for the saints of God. I have a message today for the saints of God. And, and of course, when I say that, uh, you know, uh, particularly if you were raised in the Catholic Church, you're going to think that I'm going to be preaching to dead people here today. Because in the Catholic Church, if I'm not mistaken, you uh, to be qualified to be a saint, you have to have done some extraordinary things during your lifetime, I think performed at least two miracles and, and all of that, and then you have to have been dead for a, a certain length of time or whatever. So that's when, when you say saints, that's what most people think, I guess, a lot of people think is that, you know, saints are dead people that, you know, you know, in the Catholic Church primarily, you know, saints are dead people that, you know, lived a long time ago and now they're dead and they did some extraordinary things years ago. But that's what a lot of times people think when you say saints. But, you know, nothing could be any further from the truth than that. Uh, now, if you want to know, according to the Bible, who saints are, saints, now, according to the Bible. Now, I want to go with the Bible. How about you? So, according to the Bible... The saints of God are all who believe, all who believe with all of their heart in Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And when one does that, at that point they become set apart and sanctified by the blood of Jesus and declared to be a saint of God. Now you need to understand there are saints of God in heaven, all right. Those who have died in Christ, believing on Him, and their, their spirits are in heaven right now. But, you know, we here alive on the earth who have placed our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, the Bible says we're saints of God also. We are saints of God. So you need to understand that, that you, if you're a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, you, according to the Bible, are a saint of Almighty God. You see in the epistles, the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, you know, in the New Testament, again, he'd, he'd address them to the saints of God, to the saints of God, to the saints of God. Those were living people at the time who had placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when I say I have a message for the saints of God today, I'm talking to anybody in this room, anybody on social media, anybody that wants to listen who has placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a saint of God. So I have a message for you today. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Let's go to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Daniel, the seventh chapter. He was a prophet of God in the Old Testament, a, a man that God used to, to see ahead in time and predict future events and, and all of that. And uh, uh, he had a dream in the night time, and it was really like a vision inside of a dream that he had. And in Daniel 7, verse 21, he says this, I was watching, now this was in his dream, he had, like I said, he had a dream in the night time, and it was like a vision in, inside of his dream that he, that he had. And he said, he said, I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints, and prevailing against them. Until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. Now, I tell you what, that excites me. He says, I'm watching and the same horn was making war against the saints. So something was coming against the saints of God and was prevailing against them. Until, I like that word until, until... The Ancient of Days came and, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. Now this horn was the Antichrist. If you studied into it and took the time and looked at it, this horn was the Antichrist. See Daniel seeing ahead in the future. And the Antichrist has not yet arisen 
on the scene, but at some point he will. A human being empowered by the devil. And as you study further into this, Daniel was seeing into the context of the end times, the, the time of the, the end, and actually the battle of Armageddon, which will be the last battle, the battle of all battles. And he sees the Antichrist, this human being empowered by the devil, making war against the saints, those on the earth at that time, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, and this horn, this the horn is symbolic of the Antichrist, this Antichrist will be making war against the saints of God and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days. Does anybody know who the Ancient of Days is? That, that, that's God, isn't it? That, that's Almighty God, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know. Until the Ancient of Days, Almighty God came and made a judgment in favor of the saints. <laughs> Glory to God, that excites me. And then, if you studied further into it, you'll see that the, you would see that the Antichrist is thrown into hell. If you read the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is thrown into hell. This one that was prevailing against the saints until God came and made a judgment in favor of the saints. And once God makes a judgment in favor of the saints, then the Antichrist who's empowered by the devil, the Antichrist is thrown into hell. The devil is thrown into the bottomless pit and the saints are given the kingdom of God. <laughs> Glory to God. That's, that's, that, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Titling this message today, In Favor of the Saints. In Favor of the Saints. In Favor of the Saints. God makes judgment and when He does... It's always in favor of his saints. That's a good deal, isn't it? Is that wonderful? And you know, I shared this with you about Daniel and what he saw in his, in, in his vision here, in his dream. But you know, this happened again and again throughout the entirety of the Bible. The devil would war against the saints of God and the devil would actually be prevailing until the Ancient of Days, until God would come on the scene and make a judgment in favor of His saints. You see it again and again in the Bible. Right here in the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel, remember, there was an edict made that if you were to pray, you'd be, you'd be put to death and thrown in the lion's den. Remember that? And once that edict was made, guess what Daniel did? He prayed anyway, didn't he? And you'd agree with me, Daniel is a saint of God, right? He's a believer in God, of course. And, uh, but there was an edict made that if you prayed, you'd be thrown into, uh, into the lion's den. But Daniel prayed anyway. You know, I, I don't care what, what law is passed in the land. I tell you what, if it violates the Bible, the Bible says we ought to obey God rather than man. You need to understand that. You need to understand that. And uh, uh, see, and let me just say this. If, if they ask me to wear a mask, now I don't wear a mask while I'm preaching, but I wore a mask before I came up here to preach. If they ask me to wear a mask, to me that's not a big deal. I don't have a problem wearing a mask. That's, to me that's not a big, a big thing, okay? Sad to say that's been politicized here in the, in, in, in the nation and it's very sad. Uh, but be that, and you should never politicize public health, by the way. But, but having said that, having said that, I don't have a problem wearing a mask. That's not a hill worth dying on for me. But I tell you what, if they tell me I can't come in here and preach the word of Almighty God, uh, that's now that, now, now, now that's a whole different thing right there. And I'm going to obey God rather than man. And if they put me in jail, so be it. I'll go to jail and preach the word there. Did you hear what I just said? We ought to obey God rather than man. And by the way, there's no man. Holy Ghost wants me to say this. There's no man. There's no politician that has given me any right 
to say things that I couldn't have said before from this pulpit. A man of God doesn't need a president or anybody else to give him permission to preach, thus saith the Lord of Lord God, what God says from the pulpit. Did you hear what I just said? I said, did you hear what I just said? I said, a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't need a president or anybody else to give him permission to stand in the pulpit and say, thus saith the Lord God. Yeah, but Lyndon Johnson passed something years ago that hindered men of God from standing in the pulpit. You know what I say to that thing Lyndon Johnson passed? <clears throat> On that. I'm going to stand here and say, thus saith the Lord God, whether Lyndon Johnson made an edict or not. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to stand here and say, thus saith the Lord God, whether Donald Trump said I could or not. Did you hear what I just said? Spirit of God came on me strong this last week and said, there's no man that gives a man of God permission to speak the word of God in the pulpit. I'm going to say, thus saith the Lord God, whether it's legal or not. Did you hear what I just said? We need to get stirred up and be like Daniel. I didn't intend to say that, but I felt the Spirit of God wanted me to say that. There's no man, woman, boy or girl, politician that gives a preacher permission to say something or not say something in the pulpit. Did you hear what I just said? Boy, the power of God's all on me right now. I'm going to say, thus saith the Lord God, no matter what it costs me, I don't need anybody to give me permission to say it other than Almighty God. Can you say amen? And if they put me in prison, then we'll preach there. Did you hear what I just said? But you see, we need to be like Daniel. They said, you can't pray. If you pray, the king signed the order. If you pray, you're going into the lion's den. Well, guess what Daniel did? He went and he prayed anyway. And if I'm not mistaken, he prayed three times a day. He obeyed God rather than man. I like somebody like that. How about you? We need men and women of God like that in this nation. Praise God forevermore. We're going to obey God rather than man. And so that's what Daniel did. And he prayed anyway. And guess what? He was thrown into the lion's den. And these lions were fierce. And they were hungry. And of course, they were a type of the devil. And so Daniel went into the lion's den. And I tell you what, when they were taking him down to the den... They came over and they got him, no doubt. They ta they're taking him down to the den and down they go. And as they go, it looks to me, it looks to me like uh, the devil's going to prevail over Daniel. That's what it looks like. It looks like he's going to go in the lion's den. It looks like the devil's prevailing. And in fact, they lowered him down into that den. And there were many lions down there and they were very hungry lions. I'll tell you for sure. They were very, very hungry lions. They were mean and fierce and they were a type of the devil. And you see, it looked like, it looked like the devil was prevailing against one of God's saints. As Daniel is lowered and lowered down into that den and, and he's put down in there, it looks it looks at that moment like, like the devil's prevailing against one of God's saints. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? The Ancient of Days came and made a judgment in favor of his Saint Daniel by sending his angel and shutting the lion's mouth so they could not hurt him. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Isn't that exciting? You see, just when it looked like the devil was prevailing against one of God's saints, God, the Ancient of Days, shows up by sending his angel and he shuts the lion's mouth. Glory to God forevermore. And, and, and a judgment was made in favor of Daniel. Praise God. And then you know what? Those that come against the saints of God, remember what happened? We told you here as Daniel had that vision and, and that, that Antichrist was coming against him and the devil was coming, coming against the, uh, the, 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 the people of God. Remember that? But what happens to the devil in the end? He tries to come against the saints of God, but God shows up, makes a favor in judgment of the saints, and then the devil gets thrown into, into hell. You understand? And so the people that came against Daniel, once God made a judgment in favor of his, of his Saint Daniel, 
guess what happened to Daniel's conspirators? Those that came against him, the Bible tells us what happens to them. They get thrown into the lion's den. They get thrown in there and then people say, well, those lions mustn't have been very hungry when Daniel went down in there. No, those lions were hungry. You know how I know they were hungry? Because when his conspirators went down, when they got thrown down into the den of lions, guess what? Before they even hit the floor, the Bible says the lions chewed them up, you see. Why did they chew up uh, uh, the conspirators of Daniel, but they didn't chew up Daniel? Because Daniel was a saint of God and judgment was made in favor of him. Glory to God. And the angel came and shut the lion's mouth. Can you say amen? Glory to God. That's exciting. See, God made a judgment in favor of his saint, in favor of Daniel. Glory to God. And the devil couldn't harm him. And those that were cooperating with the devil, they got thrown into the lion's den. I'm just so excited that God, when he comes, he shows up, he makes a favor in judgment of the saints. And then, of course, there's another story right here in the book of Daniel. You know, the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many remembers them? And... Uh, and of course, here we go again. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, he made a he made a statue and he said that when the music plays, everybody has to bow down and worship the statue that he had made of himself. Remember that. How many, do you think Nebuchadnezzar had, had a little problem with pride? Do you think he did? Absolutely. He had a statue made of himself and he wanted he wanted people to bow down to that statue every time the music played. But guess what? Uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they refused. They refused to bow down and, and worship that statue when the music played. And when music when when the uh, word came to Nebuchadnezzar that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego would not bow down, you know, when 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 the music played, he called them in and gave them another chance. And he said, we're going to play the music again. And when we play the music again if you don't bow down then we're going to throw you into the fiery furnace and we're going to stoke it up seven times hotter than it was before and I like what Shadrach Meshach and Abednego said to him they said to him they said king now they were respectful to the king how many of you know we ought to be respectful to political figures we ought to but how many of you also know we ought to obey God rather than man? Is that right? And so, so they, 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 they went in there and, and he said, we're going to give you another chance to bow down when the music plays. And they said to him, they said, King, listen, our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But I tell you what they said to him. They said, we know he'll deliver us, but even if he doesn't. See, this is what makes you fireproof right here. Knowing God, knowing that God is able to make you fireproof, but then saying this, even if he doesn't deliver us, we're still going to serve him anyway. Can you say amen to that? See, there's a whole lot of people, they'll serve God as long as God's doing everything that they think that he ought to do. But what are you going to do when God's not doing what you think he ought to do? Are you going to still serve him then? And you see, what makes somebody fireproof is when you get the attitude about yourself that we're going to serve God, but and we know he'll come through for us. But even if he doesn't come through, we're still not going to bow down to the devil. We're still going to serve God anyway. And that's what made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fireproof. And they said to the king, they said, King, we know that our God is well able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down. So guess what? Uh, they, uh, the king had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego taken down, you know, to the fiery furnace. They stoked it up seven times hotter than it was before. And uh, so right at this point, it looks like the devil's prevailing against them, doesn't it? Looks like the devil's prevailing against them all the way down to the furnace they go. And then and then the, 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 the people, you know, that had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego captive, you know, uh, uh, and don't tell me that fire wasn't hot because the Bible says that when, when they went to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, the people that were throwing them into the fire, the fire was so hot that those people got consumed. That was a hot fire. It was hotter than it had ever been before. And into the fiery furnace they went, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now it looks like the devil's prevailing, doesn't it? Looks like the devil's prevailing against the saints of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're believers. They're believers in God. They're saints of God. Looks, looks to me like the devil's prevailing against them at this point. And into the fire they go and it's stoked up seven times hotter than before and all of that and then in the process of time King Nebuchadnezzar he says I'm going to go down and, and see what's going on down there you know with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego you know the story but in case you don't he goes down there and he looks into that fiery furnace you know must have been standing at some distance because he didn't want to get burned up himself and so he's looking in there you know and, and, and I know most of you know the story but maybe there's somebody out there that doesn't you know in, 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 in social media land and he looks in there you know and he sees Shadrach 
And, and, and he see, now they should have been burned up. Is that right? They should have been burned up within seconds of being thrown in there. Remember the people that throw in, threw him in there, they got burned up before they even got real, really that close to the door. But he looks in there and Shadrach's in there and Meshach's in there, Abednego's in there. And then the king says this. He says, I see a fourth man in the fire. I see a fourth man in the fire and he looks like the son of God. Well, what was that? That was the ancient of days when it looked like the devil was prevailing against the saints of God. That fourth man showed up, the son of God, Jesus Christ showed up and, and Nebuchadnezzar looks in there and he sees one, two and then three and then all oh, there's a fourth one. The son of God shows up. What happened? The ancient of days showed up and he made a judgment. Glory to God. Right in the midst of the fire, he made a judgment in favor of his saints. Praise God forevermore. And the Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they came out of that fire. They were not burned. Glory to God. And the Bible says they were not harmed in any way. And I guess all it did was they, it burned off the ropes. That's about all the harm that came to them. Burned off the ropes that they were, were, they were bound with. But other than that, they came out. Praise God. And the Bible said they didn't even smell a smoke. Glory to God. Isn't that exciting? Praise God. What happened there? God showed up and he made a judgment in favor of the saints of God. Praise God. Isn't that exciting? I just, that, that just, that just, I just get so excited I could just start running around the room. God showed up right in the midst of that fiery furnace and he made a judgment in favor of his saints. Praise God forevermore. And they were not harmed. They didn't even smell like they had smoke on them. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that exciting? See, when God shows up, he makes judgment in favor of his saints. Praise God. So if you feel like you're in the middle of a fiery furnace here today, let me tell you what, God will show up. I tell you what, if you'll keep your faith in him, he'll show up and he'll make a judgment in your favor. Praise God. Maybe there's sickness and disease eating away at your body. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, if you'll just hold on and trust in God, God will show up and he'll make a favor. If you'll believe in him and trust in him, he'll show up and he'll make a judgment in your favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. And then we could go on, but Moses, think about Moses and the, and the children of Israel. Remember when they were at the Red Sea? How many remembers that? They're at the Red Sea and they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They've got the big Red Sea on one side and they got Pharaoh's army coming at them on the other. How many of you remember that? Saints of God, caught between a rock and a hard place. Do you Have you ever been caught between a rock and a hard place? And you're there, there's nowhere to go, seemingly. If you go forward, you're going to drown in the Red Sea. And if you stay where you're at, you know, uh, Pharaoh's army is going to swoop in on you and kill you. And, and so that's where, where the saints of God, Moses and the people of God, that's where they were. They were out at the Red Sea and, and they, they were caught between a rock and a hard place. But I tell you what, when we get caught between a rock and a hard place, there's somebody named God who's known as the Ancient of Days. Glory to God. And he can show up and he can turn, he can make a, fa a judgment in favor of you. Glory to God. And he can change the most difficult of circumstances around. Praise Praise God. There's nothing too hard for God and there's nothing impossible to those who will believe in him. Glory to God. And so there's Moses and the people of God out there at the Red Sea and it looks bleak. It looks terrible. It looks bad and, 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 and it looks like there's no way out. But glory to God forevermore. The Bible says that Moses raised his staff. Hallelujah. He raised his staff and when he raised that staff, praise God, the ancient of days, God Almighty came. He made a judgment in favor of his people and all of a sudden you know there was fire on one side and that fire held off Pharaoh's army praise God and then something else happened the Red Sea opened up glory to God forevermore isn't that exciting no, I said the Red Sea opened up. I mean, right there, it looks like the, the saints of God are going to die right there. Either way they go. But God, you know, God's got a plan. When it looks like to us, we have no, that he has no plan, that there's no way out. When we don't have a plan, God's got a plan. Glory to God. 
And, and, and a lot of times his plan is it, so different than anything we, we'd ever think that he would do. <clears throat> but what he did, I'll say it again, he, the fire God manifested. And it, it, it held off Pharaoh and his army on one side. And then the Red Sea parted on the other. And the Bible says it, st- it just stood up for him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and if you really study into it, God, what he did is he put the waters came up and they congealed or they are they froze, if you will. And actually, the people of God went across there. You could make argument that they went across that that, that Red Sea with air conditioning. <laughs> Glory to God forevermore, you know, because the waters were congealed. They were cool. And, and, but uh, a little side journey there. Uh, God believes in air conditioning. Can you say amen? Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Be that as it may, but they go across that Red Sea and they get across to the other side. And then guess what happens? The fire goes away and here comes Pharaoh and here comes his army and they get out in the middle of that same Red Sea. Some people say the Red Sea was only a couple of feet feet deep. Some say it was only a couple of inches deep. Well, you know, that would have been a greater miracle than, than you could imagine that, that water that was only two or three inches deep or two or three feet deep would drown. Pharaoh and his army. I mean, my goodness, because we know Pharaoh and his army got drunk. That, that water was deep. Can you say amen? But God, he parted it for the people of God, for his saints. He made a judgment in favor of his saints. And once they got crossed over there and they were all safe and sound on the other side, then the fire comes down. Here comes Pharaoh and his army and they get out in the middle of that sea and all of a sudden, the, 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 the whatever happened, the congealing or whatever God did to it, 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 it melts or it comes loose and down comes the water and I tell you what it destroys Pharaoh and his army can you say amen see they, it looked like they were prevailing against God's people but God came and he made a judgment in favor of his saints and he held off the enemy on one side part of the water on the other the, the saints go through they had a judgment made in favor of them they get safe and sound to the other side and then those that were coming against the people of God you know they're the ones they're the ones they're the ones that get drowned my 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 I think I don't even have this one in my notes. But I remember, this comes to my remembrance, I remember there was a man named Haman. Remember in the Old Testament, man named Haman, evil man, and he, and he constructed the gallows. And remember, he was going to put one of the saints of God up on the gallows. He was trying to destroy all the people of God. How many of you remember that? He was, he was like a, an ancient, ancient day Hitler. He was a terrible man, this man named Haman. How many of you know Hitler was a, ma- a bad, he was a bad man? Well, Haman was kind of like him. And Haman was trying to destroy the Jews. How many remembers that? And he had these gallows made and he was going to have Mordecai, you know, who was a saint of God hung up there and some different events took place and God showed up and he made a favor. He made a judgment in favor of Mordecai. Remember that? And Mordecai was spared. And guess what? Those gallows that Haman had made for Mordecai, Haman was hung on those gallows. I tell you what, it's a dangerous thing to come against the saints of God. It's a dangerous thing to come against the saints of God. I'll say it again. It's a dangerous thing to come against the saints of Almighty God. Why is that? Because God will show up every time and he'll make a judgment in favor of his saints praise God and the saints will be spared the saints will be safe and those coming against the saints there's the, they're the ones that's going to go up on the gallows they're the ones that's going to get burned up in the fire they're the ones that's going to get eaten by the lions they're the ones that's going to get drowned in the Red Sea can you say amen glory to God Whew, I could preach now and just be happy as a lark But I got a couple more. Is that all right? Remember Elisha and the Syrian army? And the Syrian army was surrounded. Uh, I'm sorry, the Syrian army had surrounded Elisha and his servant. See, Elisha and his servant were saints of God, but this Syrian army, very evil, and they had surrounded, the Syrian army had surrounded Elisha and his servant. Now, I know most of you are familiar with this, but in case there's somebody watching here on social media that they're not familiar. It, 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 yeah. And even if you are familiar with these stories, it's good to hear them again. It'll build your faith. It'll encourage you. And this Syrian army had surrounded Elisha and his servant, both saints of God. And the servant said to Elisha, Elisha was a prophet, a man of God. He had a young servant with him there, you know. And the young servant said, Alas, what shall we do? Have you ever been there? Or you said, Alas, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're surrounded by this great army. And Elisha said to the servant, he said, Don't fear. 
He said, don't fear for those who are with us or more than those that are with them. We always need to remember that. I like to say it this way. God's got more angels than the devil has demons. Glory to God. But you see, in that moment, it looked like the enemy was going to prevail against Elisha and his servant. They were out there. They were surrounded. Elisha and his servant. And it looked like they were going to be prevailed against by the enemy. But oh, glory to God, the ancient of days came and he made a judgment in favor of Elisha and his servant, both saints of God. And the Bible said that God had surrounded that enemy army with warring angels in chariots of fire. See, when Elisha said, those that be with us, are more than those that be with the enemy. He was talking about these warring angels of God in chariots of fire. And, and he said, he prayed to God. He said, he said, Lord, open this young man's eyes. And his eyes were open. Now, what do I mean? His eyes were open. He was able to see over in the spirit realm. See, we need to, we need to realize there's a spiritual realm. There's a spirit realm. A lot of times we're always looking here in the natural realm. We're looking in the natural realm. And if all you do is look in the natural realm, around many times there's reason to be discouraged and there's there's reason to feel like defeat is imminent but I tell you what we need to look beyond the natural realm and realize there's a spirit realm and over in the spirit realm glory to God God's got warring angels he's got chariots of fire and and and, and those that be with us you see they're on our side as saints of God and more than the, the, there are more of them than there are there are of the enemy glory to God let's don't ever forget that dear friends Let's don't ever forget that. And so it was here with Elisha and his servant and, and, and the young man's eyes were opened and he saw over in the spirit arena in the spiritual realm and there were warring angels and chariots of fire. <laughs> Glory to God. You see what was happening there? God was making a judgment in favor of his two saints here, Elisha and his servant. And then, and then Elisha said, God, strike him with blindness. And God struck him with blindness. That, that Syrian army was struck with blindness. And then Elisha takes the Syrian army and he leads them into, in, in, into the city of God. Glory to God. And then the, and then the king says, do you want us to, to kill them? And Elisha says, no. He said, don't kill them. Just send them back from where they came from. And the Bible goes on to say that they bothered the people of God no more. Well, I guess not. Glory to God. I guess not. But you see, just when the devil, just when it looks like the devil's come to put your eyes out, God will make a judgment in favor of you, his saint, and he'll put the devil's eyes out. You, you know what I mean? These enemies here were struck with blindness for a season. Because, see, they, it looked like they were prevailing against the saints of God, but a judgment was made in favor of the saints, and they were struck with blindness where they couldn't see, and then they were turned Loose back, never to bother the people of God again. See, the point here is, is that when you're in trouble and it looks like the devil's uh, got you, that's when God will show up, praise God, make a judgment in your favor, put the devil's lamp out, put his eyes out, do whatever he's got to do, you know, and, and send him away. And, 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 and I tell you what, it can discourage the devil so that he'll, he'll tend to leave you alone in the future. Can you say amen to that? That's kind of what happened with David and Goliath. Remember that? How many remembers that? And, and David was out there and Goliath. I didn't have this in my notes, but David and Goliath. And remember that giant is making uh, threats against the, the, the armies of the living God. Remember that? And against David. How many remembers that? Goliath making, making, making all kinds of threats and all kinds of, of saying all kinds of terrible things, you know, and telling David that he's going to, you know, feed his carcass to the birds or whatever, you know, all kinds of terrible things. And there David is, and much I could say about it, but it looks like that giant is going to prevail against little David. Remember that? How many remembers that? But in a moment's time, you know, uh, David, he took, he took those, he had five smooth stones, remember that? 
and, uh, and, and of course he had, he, it only took him one stone. Somebody said, why did he get five stones? Because Goliath apparently had four brothers, you know, so to speak. There's a joke along those lines. But what, 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 what are we saying there? That, 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 that David was ready not only to take out Goliath, but he'll take out all his brothers and everybody else. And you can do that when God shows up, make judgment in your favor, you see. But he had that one smooth stone and he slung that thing in his slingshot and he turned it loose. And I believe just as he turned that slingshot loose, I believe God made judgment in favor of his saint, in favor of David and the armies of God. And I believe God sped that, that stone up, you know. I believe he sped that stone up, supernatural, supersonic speed. And that thing hit Goliath and knocked him down. Can you say amen? And then David took the sword, took Goliath's sword and cut his own head off. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, the giant was there prevailing against the armies of God and looked like he was going to prevail against David, but judgment was made in favor of the saints of God. And then the giant got killed. He got knocked over with the stone. His head was cut off. Praise God forevermore. See, judgment was made in favor of the saints against the giant. Is there a giant facing you today? Is there some giant in your life? Well, I tell you what, be faithful to God. God will make judgment in favor of you. And glory to God, you'll prevail. The, ju the judgment will be in your favor. And and the, the giant's head will be cut off. And then the Bible said, see, Goliath was from Gath. The Bible said that word got back to Gath. Why do you think, why do you think that's significant? Because when the other giants hear that, 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 that judgment was made in favor of, of the saints of God, they're more likely to leave you alone. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. And then remember, there was a time where there were, where, where, where four lepers. And there were four lepers. And they were sitting at a gate because, you see, the Syrian army had cut off the city of Samaria. And that Samaria was the capital city of northern Israel. And the Syrian army had cut off the city of Samaria where the saints of God were. And there was great famine in the city. And the famine was severe. It was terrible. And the Bible says that there were four lepers. These were Apparently believers, from my study of it, saints of God, they were sitting at the gate of the city. And here's what they said. It was kind of like the people at the Red Sea. They were caught between a rock and a hard place. You know the devil likes to get the saints of God between a rock and a hard place. And then the devil likes to watch you sweat. Did you hear what I just said? He likes it when you get nervous and anxious and what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? But as I've been telling you here today, when you get in that, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Look to Almighty God because he'll show up and make a judgment in your favor, you see. But you see the Syrian army, they, they had surrounded uh, uh, Samaria. The lepers were there between a rock and a hard place. And here's what they said. They said, if we stay here because there was famine, there was no food. No food. People were eating their children. That's how bad it was. Think about how... Have you ever been that hungry? No, no, I don't think I've ever been. Think about that. See, we need to think about... You see, we live here in the United States. We, we're, very, we're very favored here in the United States. But there was a famine going on in Samaria, and the Bible says people were eating their children. That's how bad it was. Think about that. They were eating dove dung. They were eating mules' heads. They were selling mules' heads for all kinds of money because people would pay it just to have something to eat. They'd be eating doves' dung, selling it for all kinds of money. Think how bad this famine was. The Syrian army had cut off the city. No food could get in to Samaria. And there were four lepers that sat at the gate. And they said this. They said, if we stay here... And just sit at this gate, we're going to die of starvation. If we go back into the city, we're going to die of starvation there because they don't have any more food back there than we have out here at the gate. But they said this, if we go out into the camp of the enemy, there's a slim chance of survival. And you know what? The Bible says that as they went... As they went, as they made a move. You know, sometimes we just need to make a move in the right direction. I said, sometimes we just need to make a move in the right direction. You know, we talk about God showing up and making judgment in our favor. But you know, as I go through these stories, 
You see again and again how the saints of God had to make a move in the right direction a lot of times. Moses had to raise his staff, didn't he? Daniel had to continue to pray, didn't he? The, the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had, they had to take a stand, didn't they? And so the Bible says these lepers, they made a move in the right direction. They said, if we stay here, we're going to die of starvation. We go back in the city, no food there, we're going to die there too. Let's go out among the enemy camp. There's slim chance of survival. Maybe they won't kill us. Maybe they'll give us some food. And so they made a move toward the enemy camp. And the Bible said it was at twilight. Now that's important because... You see, something else happened at twilight in the enemy camp. When the lepers made that move at twilight, right as at dusk, you know, right at twilight, as they made a move in the right direction, the Bible says at twilight, something happened in the enemy camp. The enemy heard a sound of a rushing mighty army coming their way when there was none. And it scared the Syrians so bad that they fled and they ran off. Think about it. When the lepers moved at twilight in the right direction at that same, the Bible says at twilight is when that great sound of that army manifested. See, when we make a move in the right direction, then God makes a move in our direction. Did you get what I just said? And so the lepers moved at twilight, and just as they made that move, at twilight there was a mighty sound of a rushing army coming in the enemy camp, and the enemies ran off. What was that? It was in that moment that the Ancient of Days showed up and made a judgment in favor of the saints of God. <laughs> Glory to God. And God can do it in many different ways. As we've already seen, he can shut lion's mouths. He can cause fires not to burn you. He can cause fires to manifest. He can cause water to part. Glory to God. He can cause stones to be sped up. We serve a miraculous God. Let's don't ever forget that. Let's don't ever forget that when we have plan A and it fails, and then we go to plan B and it fails, and then we go to plan C and it fails, and we're all out of plans, and we think it's all over, God shows up, makes a judgment in our favor, and He's got plans D, E, F, G, L, M, N, P, X, Y, Z. Can you say amen? <laughs> Glory to God. And so the lepers made that move, and when they did, that sound of that army manifested. There was no army coming. God can make sounds appear to scare the enemy. Did you hear that? Did you understand what I just said? And he made a sound. There was no army coming. But God made a sound like there was one. The Syrians run off and the lepers show up out there. And the enemy's gone. And guess what? They start eating them some food. And then they went in and they told the rest of the city of Samaria that the Syrians had fled. And the rest of the city came out. And they had some eating to do. Glory to God. What caused all that? It was God making a judgment in favor of his saints. And you see it in the New Testament. Think about, and I could share many stories, but think about the disciples in the storm. Remember when Jesus sent them to the other side of the, of, the, of the lake? Remember that? And Jesus stayed back behind to pray? How many remembers that? And the disciples were out there and they were toiling and rowing and they were taking on water. And you know that storm was of the devil and that storm was designed to try to, 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 to destroy the disciples. You see, they were saints of, saints of the Lord. You know, they believed in the Lord. And the Lord had sent them to the other side and they're out there toiling and rowing. And, and, and Jesus was back on the land praying because he sent them to the other side on ahead. And they were in trouble out there. They were in trouble. I mean, there was a bad storm going on and it looked like the devil was prevailing and the devil was prevailing against the disciples they were in trouble it was it looked like they were going to sink out there but guess what the bible says in the fourth watch of the night you know god i found he seldom ever early but he is never late glory to god i said he seldom ever early but he is never late 
And, and, and in the fourth watch of the night, when the disciples were about to sink and go under, guess what? Somebody came walking on the water. Guess who it was? It was Jesus. He came walking on the water and he saved them from destruction. Can you say amen to that? Praise God. Isn't that exciting? What happened in the fourth watch at the last moment, but yet right on time, Jesus came walking on the water, the ancient of days, and he made a judgment in favor of his saints and he commanded the wind to cease and all of that that, you know, and there was a great calm and the disciples were saved. Isn't that exciting? Praise God. Judgment was made in favor of his saints as Jesus showed up walking on the water. Another one I could tell you about is Paul and Silas. Remember, they were in prison. They'd been beaten to, 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 to smithereens and they're in the innermost part of the jail. Remember that? And, 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 and they had done something good. They cast a demon out. Paul cast a demon out of a fortune teller. And as a result, he got beat up and him and Silas in the prison. How many remembers that? In that Philippian jail. And remember at mid, and it looked like the devil had prevailed against them. I mean, they're locked in, they're locked in jail. I mean, you see the, the disciples in jail more than once. You see Peter in jail. You see the disciples in trouble. And, and you know, they're in trouble a lot of times because they were commanded, they were commanded not to preach in the name of Jesus. Well, I'm going to tell you again, I'm going to preach in the name of Jesus. No matter who tells me I can't, I'm going to keep preaching in the name of Jesus. How about, I mean, don't you think that's good? Don't you think so? But they'd get in jail again and again. But in this particular case, Paul and Silas, you see, it looks like the devil's prevailing against them. And, but at midnight, they weren't crabbing and complaining. See, what do we have? We have to do the, we have to do something many times. We have to make a, you know, would you agree it took faith for them to pray in the midnight hour and, and sing and praise God in the midnight hour when they've been beaten up and they're in the worst part of the jail? But you see, they weren't grab, crumb, crumb, they weren't grum, grumbling, complaining, going on. No, 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 no. They were praising God. They were, they were doing the right thing. They were, they were moving in faith. And I tell you, what, they were praising God in the midnight hour, you know. And, and, and the Bible said, suddenly, see, suddenly, suddenly God will move. Suddenly God will move. And he'll come in there and he'll make a judgment in favor of his saints. And the Bible says, suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the Bible says the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. Glory to God. What was that? That was God making a judgment in favor of his saints. And they got released from prison. Can you say amen? Glory to God. And then you study the rest of the story. That, 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 that jailer, he got saved and, and the Philippian church was born and he became the pastor of the church. And I think all those other inmates became members of the church. I, I think you could make good argument for that. I know the pastor became the uh, uh, the the, the, the prison leader that got saved, uh, the captain of the prison, he got saved, became the pastor of the church. I don't know that those other uh, 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 inmates became members of the church, but they probably did because when their chains were loose, they didn't run off, did they? Which would indicate to me they probably got saved right there as God was making judgment in favor of Paul and Silas. Uh, the, 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 the jailer, the main jailer got saved, you know, all these other inmates probably got saved and the birth, see the devil was prevailing against the saints of God. God God showed up, made a judgment in favor of the saints and, and, and the devil, it looked like he was prevailing, but he lost in the end because you see there was a church born, praise God, one of the greatest churches in the Bible. See, God can turn things around, folks. He can turn things around. When he makes a judgment in favor of his saints, you see, he can turn things around and the devil was thwarted and a great church was born. Glory to God. Well, I get excited about these things. We don't need to be hanging our head down here. We're serving Almighty God. Let's don't let COVID get us down. Let's, let, let's stand in the power of God. What do you say? And my heart goes out to the people that, are, that have died with it. Don't misunderstand me. But what I'm saying is we as saints of God, let's stand. And trust God and believe God. What this nation needs is national repentance. I tell you what this nation needs worse than a vaccine is national repentance. I tell you what, we need a vaccine, all right. But I'll tell you what, by the Spirit of God, this nation needs something worse than a vaccine. It needs national repentance from the, from the president down to, down to the pauper. Can you say Amen. This nation needs repentance from the, from the pulpit to the pew. Did you hear what I just said? I said, did you hear what I just said? 
I tell you what, it wouldn't take God any time to come in here and thwart this whole coronavirus thing. I said it wouldn't. Everybody's looking at a vaccine, looking at a vaccine, looking at a vaccine. Well, thank God for the vaccine. Why don't we look at God more than a vaccine? Did you get what I just said? See how easy it is to get over in the natural and think about the natural stuff all the time? It would take God about less than 15 seconds to thwart coronavirus in the nation. It, that quick. All he'd have to do is that. But I tell you what, we need national repentance. I said we need national repentance. How far do you think it would go if, if there was repentance, like I said, from the president to the pauper, from the pulpit to the pew, throughout this entire nation? Repentance in the news media, repentance among all the politicians, repentance everywhere. And we all turned to Almighty God and looked to Him and cried out to Him, don't you think that God could make a judgment in favor of the saints and thwart coronavirus in less than 15 seconds? Absolutely He could. I said absolutely He could. This nation needs national repentance. And I don't mean just a little singing God bless America on the, on, the, on, 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 on the capital steps one time. I'm talking about in sackcloth and ashes kind of repentance. And a turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see again and again throughout the Bible... The devil warring against God's people and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days comes and makes a judgment in favor of the saints. But I'm going to close with this. The greatest example of this, God making judgment in favor of the saints, is seen in what I'm going to close with. You know, back in the Garden of Eden, the devil made war against Eve through deception and prevailed, and she ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Then Adam sinned, being right there with her, and he full well, knowing what he was doing, ate of that tree. And the devil then, as a result of that, as mankind fell, the devil had a right to take their eternal spirits as well as yours and mine, because we're descendants of them, of Adam and Eve. The devil had prevailed and he had the rights to take us to hell for eternity. Until something happened a little bit later, perhaps that day. The Bible says somebody came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And that would have been the Ancient of Days. And he shows up there and he questions Adam and Eve and all of that. And how many of you know sin is a terrible thing? And there was punishment for what they did. And we've all borne the results of that in one way or another. But we've all certainly borne it in that we've all been cut off from the life of God as we're born into this earth, you see. But God came walking in the cool of the day and he said this to the devil because it looked like the devil had prevailed. And he said, I will put enmity, enmity between you and the woman. He's talking to the devil now, the serpent. And between your seed and her seed. Now, when he said her seed, that's the first mention of the virgin birth right there in the whole Bible. Now, here at this Christmas season, what do we, what do we celebrate? We celebrate the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was vital that he was born of a virgin. Can you say amen? That's what made him God. I mean, that's what made him God. His virgin birth, that's what made him, along with his sinful, sinless life, his virgin birth, along with his sinless life, is what made Jesus qualified to die as our substitute and die as our Savior. His virgin birth, which made him God, God manifest in the flesh. 
You ought to study the, uh, all the begats in the Bible sometime. I tell you what, it's a, it's a fascinating study. And it shows us that Jesus is who he said he was. He's the, he's the son, the matchless son of Almighty God. And that virgin birth, he was born without the sin nature, very God in the flesh. And then he, he lived a sinless life, never sinned one time. And it made him qualified to be the Savior and the substitute for all mankind. Can you say amen? But Adam and Eve, there they are, cut off in the Garden of Eden, cut off from the life of God. But God comes walking in the cool of the day and he says, I'll put enmity, enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He's talking about Jesus Christ right there. Because a woman don't have seed. You understand that? So it was a virgin birth he was talking about there. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Well, certainly Jesus was bruised on the cross, wasn't he? Certainly. But ultimately he bruised the devil's head and authority. Can you say amen? But you see, there came the ancient of days in the cool of the day in the garden. And what he was doing there was making judgment in favor of the saints. Promising the virgin birth. And then God used the blood of animals to cover men's and women's sins in the Old Testament until he could get Jesus into the earth, born of a virgin, as our Savior. And Jesus then eventually hung on the cross. He bore our sins and the sins of all mankind, the sins of Adam and Eve and everyone that's ever lived. Jesus bore the sins of all mankind as he hung and died upon the cross. Then the Bible says his body lay in the tomb for three days and three nights. And dear friends, at that point, it looked like the devil had yet again prevailed. Think about it. There Jesus is hanging on the cross. I mean, we know what we know because we've read the Bible, but the people back there then, they didn't have the luxury of 2,000 years of study of the Bible, did they? So they're looking up and seeing Jesus on the cross. It looks like the devil's prevailing, doesn't it? He's in the tomb. This tomb has been sealed off and shut. It looks like the devil has won, doesn't it? But thank God the third day came, the third day came, the third day came. Thank God the third day came. I said, thank God the third day came. Thank God the third day came. Because on the third day, the Ancient of Days, God the Father came and made a judgment in favor of the saints. And he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Can you say amen? Glory to God. And the angel came down and rolled back the stone. Praise God. And then Jesus came walking out that tomb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was the heavenly father making judgment in favor of all the saints that's ever lived. Because when Jesus got raised from the dead, praise God, we got raised with him. When Adam and Eve sinned, we got unhooked from God. But when Jesus got raised from the dead, we got hooked back up with God. It will just put our simple faith in him. Can you say amen? And the resurrection of Jesus Christ is proof positive. See, we, we celebrate the birth of Jesus this year, uh, this year, this time of the year. But you see, we celebrate his birth this time of the year. But he was born to die. You understand that? And then to be raised from the dead. And when Jesus got raised from the dead, it was the Ancient of Days making a, the Father making a judgment in favor of all the saints of all time that's ever lived who will place their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I like what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. I mean, this is some of the, this is the book of Ephesians, chapters one and two, some of the most powerful verses in the Bible. Listen here. This shows what God did when he raised Jesus from the dead. How he judged in our favor. Listen to this. Which he worked in Christ when he, when the Father raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion. That's over the power of the devil, you see. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. And you, talking to you and you and you and everybody that's listening that's placed their faith in Jesus and you he made alive. 
It's talking, see, we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but, but he made us alive spiritually who were dead in trespasses and sins. The Bible says, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen to that? What is that? That's God, the ancient of days, making judgment in favor, the ultimate judgment in favor of his saints. Praise God. Isn't that exciting? Well, I tell you what, I am absolutely encouraged. This has encouraged me. I hope it's encouraged you. So I want to close and I just want to say this. Perhaps the devil is making war against you in some area of your life and it looks like he, like he's prevailing but I got good news for you I've been talking about it for the last 45 minutes the ancient of days God will show up and, he, and if you just keep your faith in him he'll show up and he'll make judgment in your favor and you'll come through it you'll go over to the other side you'll make it praise God and those that have been trying to thwart you if they don't repent they'll go under while you go over can you say amen to that all right, stand with me if you would. If you're out there and you're listening by social media, I trust this encouraged you. And uh, trust it uh, gave you some hope. I believe that it did. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, the Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So all you have to do with a repentant heart is just say, Jesus, I call on you. Come into my heart. If you'll do that, he'll come in there. He'll save you. He's already made judgment in your favor. All you have to do is receive it. So you just receive Jesus as your Savior. You'll miss hell, you'll make heaven, and He'll make your worth life. He'll make your life worth living in the meantime. Glory to God. Well, thanks for joining us today. God bless you. Bye-bye.